Hello engineers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss the basic concepts of reinforcement learning. These concepts are applicable for the older as well as the newer reinforcement learning algorithms that we see today. We would also see these concepts in action in the frozen lake environment of the open AI gym library. So let's first start with the discussion of these concepts. Reinforcement learning is the paradigm of machine learning in which the learning happens through a trial and error process. The complete picture of reinforcement learning can be understood through this diagram over here. There are two main entities present in the reinforcement learning world, which are the agent and the environment. An agent is a decision maker in the environment and is the machine that is learning through the reinforcement learning techniques. The environment is the physical world in which the agent is present. The agent takes some certain actions in the environment and the environment then informs the agent about its state and the reward that it received. The state is the current situation of the agent in the environment or in simple words where the agent is present in the environment. The reward is a scalar value that the environment gives the agent to give a feedback on the action that the agent took. In terms of this flow process, the reinforcement learning problem is defined as in which the agent learns to take actions in the environment so as to maximize its cumulative reward. Cumulative reward is the sequence of rewards that the agent receives on taking different actions in the environment. Mathematically, reinforcement learning problems are defined using an MDP or a Markov decision process. A Markov decision process is a state graph that represents the same flow process that we saw over here. The agent would be present in the current state ST in the environment. From this state ST, the agent can take two actions A1 and A2 to reach the next states which are S1 T plus 1 and S2 T plus 1. These two states have a predefined reward that the agent can receive when the agent reaches these two states which are R1 and R2. Reinforcement learning techniques are required to find a sequence of actions that the agent can take so as to maximize the reward that it receives in each state. There are four main basic concepts which are used to explain any reinforcement learning problem or technique. These are observation, state, reward and action. Reward and action are as they were defined before. The observation and the state are almost similar but they have a small difference. The state represents the complete information about the current situation of the agent in the environment. Whereas the observation is a subset of the state information, it only gives a partial information about the current situation of the agent. In a reinforcement learning setting, the agent infers only the observation from the state that the environment gives to the agent. For simpler problems, the observation and the state are the same. For harder problems, let's say a robot present in a room, the laser readings of the robot would represent the observation and the actual location of the robot on the map of the room will represent the state. These four concepts are important when we are running a reinforcement learning technique on a given environment. Most of the reinforcement learning techniques make use of three main concepts to learn the task at hand, which are the policy, the value function and the Q value function. The policy is a sequence of actions that the robot can take to maximize its reward. Mathematically, policy is simply a function that maps the state 
to an action. At each state, the policy tells which action should the agent take next. Modern reinforcement learning algorithms make use of policy gradients to learn the optimal policy or the optimal function that tells on which state the agent should take which action so as to maximize the reward. Value function is once again a function that determines the goodness of a state. The value function tells how much beneficial it is for an agent to be present in a state S so that the agent can maximize its reward starting from the state S. Mathematically, the value function maps the state S to a scalar value which determines the goodness of the state. The Q value function is similar to the value function but it also takes into account the action that the agent can take in a state S. It tells how much beneficial it is for an agent to take an action A in a state S so that the reward can be maximized after the action A is taken. Older reinforcement learning algorithms made use of value function and Q value function to determine which action the agent should take in each state. The agent would follow a greedy policy in which the agent only took actions which maximized the value functions. Once such an optimal policy is learned either through the policy gradient or the value function methods, the agent follows that policy in the environment. Alright, so this is it for the different concepts that are used in reinforcement learning. Now let us have a look at how and where these concepts are used. All the code we are discussing today is present on Kaggle. You can access this code from the link in the description. The environment that we will be using for this example is the frozen lake environment. The first step is to import the library OpenAI Gym. OpenAI Gym is a Python library developed by the company OpenAI. The Gym library provides different sample environments in which we can test, try and implement different reinforcement learning algorithms. The first step is to install its dependency Pygame and the latest version of Gym. Then we import the Gym library. In order to render these environments on the Kaggle notebook, we first install different display libraries. And then add some starter code for the same. Then we create the frozen lake environment as we can see over here. We are also setting a random seed for reproducibility. This is the visualization of the frozen lake environment. As we can see, we have our agent in the top left corner over here and we have these grids through which the agent can travel. Whenever the agent reaches the bottom right corner, the agent receives a reward of 1. Otherwise, for each action the agent takes, the reward the agent receives is 0. So, to maximize the cumulative reward, the aim of the agent is to reach the bottom right corner. And whenever the agent reaches this corner or the agent steps on one of these dark blue grids, an episode is set to be completed and the environment needs to be reset again. The first thing we do is to print the observation space, the action space, and the reward range. As we can see, the observation space would consist of 16 discrete values. The action space also consists of these four discrete values. And the reward range is from 0 to 1. As we can see in this environment, the agent can be present in one of these 16 blocks. And the current position of the agent acts as an observation for our environment. Hence, we have 16 discrete values 
that the observation can take. The agent in this environment can take one of four actions, which are up, down, left, and right. Hence, we have four discrete action values. A reward of one is received when the agent reaches the bottom right corner. Otherwise, the reward received is zero. Hence, the reward range is given as zero to one. The first step that we do before interacting with the environment is to reset the environment. We also receive the initial observation from the environment and print it as well. As we can see, this is the initial state of the environment and the initial observation is zero, implying that the agent is present in the top left corner of the screen. In the next step, we take a random action and record the new observation and the reward received on taking this action. As we can see, the random action that the agent took is left, due to which the new observation is still zero. In the next step, we take a sequence of actions and see how the agent behaves in the environment. To model complex environments, we have the concept of transition probability. It simply means that if the agent took a particular action, then there exists a probability distribution about how the agent can reach the different states. For example, if the agent took an action left, then there is an equal probability that the agent may move to the state left, up or down, which is given by the probability value 1 by 3 over here. Let's see this transition probability in action. We have created this policy list, which has a sequence of actions that the agent should take to reach the bottom right corner. In this environment, we first take the first action described by the policy, which is down. We then record the new observation and the reward received from the environment. But as we can see, the agent did not take an action which was down, but it took an action to the right. This occurred due to the transition probability in action. Over the next few cells, we can see the other actions as well. Over here, we took the action down and the agent still moved to the right. In this step, we took the action right and the agent moved downwards. And we keep on doing so until we have exhausted the policy list. Now let's see how the agent receives the rewards in this environment. Now we again create the gym environment, but we unset the transition probabilities. We do so by setting the is slippery parameter to false. Once again, we reset the environment and we have our initial observation as zero. Now we again take actions according to the sequence of actions we defined in the policy. The first action in the policy was down and we take a down action and record the new observation and the reward. As we can see, the new observation is 4, which means the agent has moved down and it has received a reward of 0. We keep on following this policy until we reach the bottom right corner and record all the rewards that we receive. As we can see, once the agent reaches the bottom right corner, it receives a reward of 1. Let's see what is the reward the agent receives when it steps on the frozen lake or the dark blue grid cells. 
as we can see the agent fell down in the frozen lake and we have to reset the environment again to do the next sequence of actions and we can also see that the reward in this state is zero following the policy the agent started from the start state and reached the goal state in the minimum number of actions hence the policy list that we created or the sequence of actions that we had was an optimal policy our goal with the reinforcement learning algorithms is to find such an optimal policy all right so this is all that we had to discuss for the basic concepts of reinforcement learning if you like the video press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos and thank you for watching bye